What is happening, all you peaceful LARPers out there? Range J Bro, back at it again. And today, we have a very special video for you guys. We're gonna talk about night vision and thermal uh, at our newest sponsor shop here, Downrange Thermal, right down the street from my place in Spicewood, Texas. So uh, with that being said, we do have a discount code. We'll just throw it out there at the beginning of the video. If you guys wanna be browsing and shopping while you listen, it's RDB5, it gets you guys 5% off almost everything on the website. So if you guys do wanna support the channel and support a local Texas company, they have some of the top, most top of the line night vision thermal stuff I've ever seen. A lot of it I've never even heard of or seen before. So we're here with Drew. So Drew, uh, let's talk about it a little bit, man. A little bit about yourself. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've been on board with Downrange Thermal here for about a year. Uh, worked side by side with them for a lot longer than that and I am in charge of the commercial sales So anything that's through our website sold commercially or in store commercially That's gonna be my wheelhouse So as you guys know We're trying to get more into a night vision and thermal and especially encouraging more civilians to own night vision and thermal Because as we see uh, in the world today, that is a very prominent aspect of modern warfare and so being the prepared citizen that you should be, I think it's important to talk That's about right. yeah, uh, your capabilities as a civilian. So at a, at a very high level, a 30,000 foot view, uh, overview, could we talk about a little bit from your perspective, night vision versus thermal applications and right. why someone might want to consider one versus the other? Yeah, I think getting started, somebody should do a dedicated thermal scope. The entry cost is low enough for a lot of people to get into a pretty decent unit for mm -hmm. two or three thousand yep. dollars. And you can throw it on your gun, you can use it day or night, and you really can't screw it up. Yeah. So the difference between thermal and night vision there is night vision's usually a little higher cost to entry, and it's pretty easy to screw it up if you get it around too much light or the laser ricochets or something like that. Now and by screw it up, you mean like literally damage your knots. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. I've done it. Uh, a lot of people that have been in the night vision game long enough, I've definitely done it. So with thermal, it's really easy to detect things. So if you're in a hunting application or a life or death application, it's really simple to be like, hey, I understand that that's a threat. I understand that that's my target. With night vision, you can detect okay, but you can PID really well. So you could be able to tell the difference between your face and my face if mm -hmm. you were downrange looking at us with night vision. Whereas thermal, most likely you wouldn't be able to do that at 50 to 100 yards away unless it's a very specific high-end thermal. And then getting into the helmet mounted night vision and lasers and stuff, we'll save that for a little bit longer down yeah. the video, but the, cool the main difference between night vision and thermal is gonna be night vision, you can ID stuff, thermal, you can detect stuff. Mm -hmm. Very cool, so I've heard people describe it as like, when you have thermal, you can very quickly identify, you can scan a field and very quickly identify if there's a warm body out there. Now, yes, certainly. Whose warm body that is, whether, I mean, you always be able to tell a, a hog from a human, but in the, even even with cheaper- Hog versus calf is a really common one. Yeah, but even with cheaper thermals, you're still gonna be able to see hot body versus cold body, certainly. but then what's camouflaged during the day is also camouflaged at night. And so that's where nods kind of struggle. If someone's yes. really well camouflaged, uh, you're gonna be able to hide from night vision a lot better than you would be able to hide from thermal. Although we've seen companies coming up with like thermal blankets and those are pretty slick, yeah. Some things to kind of protect you from thermal drones and whatnot, which we've seen used a lot in the war in Ukraine. There are some things to think about there. Obviously, I think you hit on a lot of the high points. Uh, would you say in general, night vision better for like navigating helmet mounted night vision? Oh, certainly, yes. For you like can walking see through, through the woods. glass, you can drive with night vision on, which is excellent. You have much better depth perception mm -hmm. with night vision because you're actually looking at the thing you're looking at, whereas thermal, you're looking at the screen that's looking at the thing that you're looking at. Yes. So you really don't have much depth of field yes. with thermal, whereas night vision, you really can like run without any issue. Whereas like if you had dual tube thermal on trying on to home. run, that'd be pretty funny to watch. Yeah. We should probably make a video on that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard guys talk about, you know, when you buy a thermal needing to have a rangefinder with a thermal because- Certainly. If you look at something during the day, you can have a pretty good approximation of how far it is versus when you're looking how for a thermal device. How big it device. is, yes. Yeah, a thermal device is just like you kind of have no clue. You're right. just looking at I've a screen. I've seen armadillos be blown sky high because somebody thought they were a pig at 60 yards and it was an armadillo at 15 <laughs> yards. That's a true story. Yeah, that's <laughs> And funny. it's common. Yeah, probably and, more common than we realize. Right, and even like the terrain, you really can't tell how long the terrain is in that thermal most mm -hmm. of the time. So having a night vision or having a thermal with a rangefinder, especially if it's constantly scanning, gives you a, a better way to kind of understand it right off the bat. Yeah. Whereas like after you use thermal for a long time, you can tell like the size of trees and stuff and kind of range that way. Uh, but yeah. It comes with experience, right? Mm -hmm. Just like anything else. Before we get into kind of, you know, get, get off into the weeds about specific things, do you want to talk a little bit about maybe like your helmet setup? Is this like what you might see a typical helmet setup for sure. a civilian or is this more... 
like high end? Right. So this is going to be something that I use more than anything else. And that's because I do a lot more training than I do hunting. So BNVD, which is a blanket term for binocular night vision devices. And these are from EOTech. These are the bino compacts. That's a really cool unit with photonist tubes, not to get crazy about the specifics. And then the ops core helmet mounted ear protection amps and then uh, IFF. So that's just a little IR beacon to say, hey, don't shoot me. Mm -hmm. Or if you are on the wrong team, then yeah, yeah shoot here. Yeah. So this can be a, a good thing or a very bad thing. Battery pack in the back and then IR light and white light Surefire Vampire with s, &S mount on the side on a uh, ops core carbon bump helmet. I mean, I'm, I would love to have this type of setup. That's what I'm working towards. This gives we'll you the capability to, to walk around, navigate, mm -hmm. shoot at night, passive or active. So a setup like this really gives you, unlocks a whole capability, but there still might be a, a chink in the armor, so to speak. If I had this, in my mind, the next step is, is a thermal, like a thermal clip-on or some type of thermal device Certainly. For, for scanning and or for my weapon. But either way, to have that capability, like what, what kind of thermals would you recommend somebody get into? Well, a, a really cool thermal that is becoming obsolete would be a Cody that allows you to have, in a sense, a fusion overlay. So you have night vision and then thermal laid over the top of it, which is great because then you can get that immediate detection out to six, seven, 800 meters, no problem, mm -hmm. and then be able to get closer and actually ID it with the night vision. Yeah, those just clip to. on the front of your nods, right? It I've does, seen those yeah. before. Okay. That's a really neat setup. Or you could do a PVS-14 on one side, so night vision on the right, and then the thermal on the left. Mm -hmm. uh, some people think that's a little bit crazy because the depth perception does get wonky, but you do get used to it. Um, so that's definitely an option to run both at the same time. Yeah, I really like that setup. What I have heard is that it gets makes you feel almost like car sick. Look, and I've never personally looked through a tube setup. We've sold a ton of them, and and nobody actually has that complaint. But it is kind of a well. Trend. You could just if it really is messing with you, just pop one side up. Right. It's that simple. They're articulating. Yeah. That's on a Knights uh, bridge there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty yeah, sick. It is pretty sick. PVS fourteen on yep. one side, and L three white fourteen on the right, and then thermal on the left. And you guys sell that here? We do. There you go. There's a couple because different uh, thermal like PBS 14 size units available. That's pretty dope. So this is going to give you a helmet mounted option where you can land navigate, you can PID, and then if you need thermal or you can leave them both down or you yep. can run one or the other at the time. Certainly. Pretty badass. I like yeah. this. I like the setup. I'm going to have to test this out, maybe bring you guys some footage. Let's do it. So we'll get some POV footage. Maybe we'll do this in the next video uh, be because I think this is an option that kind of maybe is the best of both worlds. I feel like this may not do any one thing in particular excellent. Right. Right. but it will do everything okay and right. kind of get you by. Obviously there's cheaper Chinese made thermals out there. There's all kinds of questionable night vision on the market, but let's talk about like if someone wanted to buy ones, cry once, so to speak, and just get the best of the best to start, mm -hmm. what, what, what would that look like to you? No matter what, the 31 alphas are phenomenal for somebody that is never going to need to let a person use those 31 A's that uses glasses because they don't have an adjustable diopter, but mm -hmm. usually you're getting the best of the best tubes in 31As, which is great. And they're also completely sealed units. So they're extremely water resistant and submergible, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. They're lightweight and they're strong. So that is kind of the creme de la creme and it's been the pinnacle for a long time. I'd say the one under that would be like the little brother to that, which is the 1531, which is the same tube, the same really high quality L3 tube, but yeah. you have adjustable diopters and still a very rugged housing. Okay, Those a little bit cheaper like as well. A little bit, yeah, because okay. it's not a submergible, not a sealed unit to speak. Helmet mounted on something like a G24 Wilcox. Yep. This G24s is kind of the gold standard, right? I mean, it is. For helmet mounted. Yep. We okay. really like the KDX mounts here as well. Uh, a little bit cheaper and pretty much accomplishes the same thing. Okay. I think it's a little bit tighter too than the Wilcox okay. as far as less wiggle. Okay. So your two mount options are the Wilcox and then what I have on this helmet, which is the KDX mount. And okay. with the KDX mount too, you can just force to overcome and flip it right back up. So we're down and then you There's no stow button. Them. No button. That's There's nice. a button to drop it down. Yeah. But then it's just forced to overcome, yeah. push it back up, which is pretty slick. Does it have the tearaway feature? I know that's a big point it does, of contention. It does have a breakaway option. Okay. There's two different models. There's a breakaway and a non-breakaway. Just like with the Wilcox. Yeah. With the Wilcox, I believe you have a switch, which allows you to break away or fix. Yes. Them. They have a version of the Wilcox that doesn't have a breakaway. I forget what it's called, but that just doesn't come with a breakaway it's feature. It's the non-breakaway version. Yes, there it is. <laughs> PBS 31 Alphas are kind of the creme de la creme for consumers. Get mm -hmm. a helmet mount, get a helmet bump or ballistic, the biggest whatever. Box. It's pretty, it's pretty dope. I'm, I'm going to be very happy when I get to bring <laughs> yeah. my home. And then a Wilcox G24. Now getting into the rifle setup, 
So I don't know if you guys can see this on camera here, but we have my six beer LT. That's my bedside gun. We're gonna be making that kind of my go-to night vision gun. Unity fast riser. We're gonna have the vampire head on there eventually. Let's talk the next evolution would then be a laser, right? An IR? Certainly, yep. Okay. IR eliminator what, and IR pointer. Totally. In your opinion, in using these and selling these constantly, what is like your top three? Yeah, that's great. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Okay. So the best commercial option would be the RAID. XE. Wilcox. Yep. Okay. And then under that, I'd say the Mall C1. Mm -hmm. And then doing a kind of a dual setup with a Steiner CQBL on top, which mm -hmm. is a IR dot and Viz dot. And then you could rock like a Vampire, vampire head, as yeah. the Illuminator side or a B. Myers Kiji as the Illuminator. Okay. And that would all be pretty comparable to some of the restricted stuff being Vexel and like between 20 to 30 milliwatts. Explain that real quick, Vexel versus? Well, Vexel is just the newer technology that can be brighter and mm -hmm. still be ice safe. So before you had restrictions of five milliwatts for anything that was non-Vexel, mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was a COP um, diode, and then you were not ice safe anything above five milliwatts according to the FDA. Mm -hmm. But with the Vexel lasers, you can actually be 20 to 30 milliwatts and still be ice safe. So you get 4X the intensity okay. of that you know, five milliwatt original like at PLC or something, mm -hmm. and then uh, still be ice safe, so they're sold commercially. So consumers, civilians can buy them. Mm -hmm. If you put them side by side, could you notice a difference? On the Illuminator, most definitely. On the Illuminator. But if you have a vampire head, are vampire heads better than most Illuminators that are like on board, like an Engal or something like that? No, certainly not. And the divergence is what's, what's gonna get you there. So Where the vampire can... is a big flood yeah. and it's fixed, whereas like the Engal is a, is a beautiful, uh, super tight diverging flood illuminator and that's going to be able to ID stuff out to seven, 800 yards with a clip on. Okay. That's what I was about to say, but is that even going to matter for somebody who just has helmet mounted nods? No, Probably it's not. really not. It's only going to matter. And in fact, it can often be too bright. So if you've got fog or something like that, it's actually going to reflect off the fog a lot and yeah. you're not even able to turn it down enough, even with the diffusers on low power, et cetera. And that fog is just overpowering you from the reflection and you can't actually see like Steel targets at 50 yards with a lot of fog. I've been in those training scenarios before and you're like, I can see it with white light-ish, but then as soon as I go IR, it's just bouncing back. It's mm -hmm. just overpowering everything. Yeah, so that's a good point. So for for a, helmet, for a civilian who's got helmet mounted nods, most people are gonna be struggling just to get to the helmet mounted nods, just like myself, I'm a working guy. I'm gonna be putting every dollar I have towards those nods. I'm probably not gonna have a clip on as well. And so it is not gonna matter for me to have that crazy tight mm -hmm. illumination, the end goal or like some of these, some of these uh, commercially restricted lasers are gonna offer uh, with the setup that I'm looking for. I'm looking Certainly. for PBS 31 alphas, uh, riser, most of the time I'm gonna be aiming passively, which you're not, you're not even gonna use IR illumination in that situation, right? Because otherwise you would just, what does it matter if you throw your laser out there, if you're just sending out a beacon of light? Do you want to talk about thermal night vision clip-ons more specifically or yeah, anything certainly. like that? So, so to break it down, you've got a few different night vision options. You have a helmet mounted night vision option. You have a clip-on, which goes in front of the day scope. Mm -hmm. uh, which I've we have right back here. That's a that's pretty... clip-on thermal. Okay. And then right here, uh, that's going to be clip-on night vision. Okay. And so the clip-on night vision goes in front of the day scope on the pick rail. Mm -hmm. It is not something that goes on the helmet. Okay. which is often uh, misinterpreted. Okay. So I've learned this over commercial sales lately that people are like, do you have any clip-on PBS 14s? I'm like, mm, that's not really a thing. You yeah. Know? And then you have the uh, dedicated units. So you do kind of have some dedicated night vision units that's becoming obsolete, but then dedicated thermal is a big deal as well. And then thermal scanners and stuff. So to break it down, once again, you've got helmet mounted stuff, mm -hmm. whether it be night vision or thermal, then you've got dedicated stuff. So it's just going to take place of the sites, whether it be whatever kind LPBO of scope or, or EOTAC or whatever. Yep, exactly, yeah. it's gonna take place of that. And then you have some sort of a scanner usually on the thermal side, whether it be like thermal binoculars or a, a thermal mono scanner. Wouldn't a clip-on be like the best of all worlds there for like a thermal clip-on where you can scan with it, take it off the rifle, because you're not zeroed, your, your day scope is zeroed, right? right? And, and then you could take it off, scan with it, theoretically, right? I mean, not really. And the reason why is because with the thermal clip-ons, they're demagnifying the display. So yes, you can, but it looks like for any kind of decent- a tiny little square? Yes, exactly. Okay. So it looks like the image is three or four times farther away than it actually is, which yes, you can still detect, but it's not really intended to be used that way. Okay, There's That's a couple exceptions enough. to that, but for the most part, clip-on is gonna be a demagnified display that goes in front of the day optic to then run magnification behind and it. And is, is there a limit of magnification you could use with a clip-on thermal device? Is it like 6X yeah. or what it, is it? It is very device 
driven. So yeah. there is some like long range clip-ons which aren't gonna work great at the low power because you're gonna have a very small uh, display. Mm -hmm. And then as you zoom in on that display and you blow it up, it might blow up and fill the uh, in entire scope at maybe eight power, 10 mm -hmm. power. And then some will go all the way up to you know, 20 and 25 if it's a really high end, like a cooled thermal. And then with night vision, it's a little bit of an exception to that for the clip-on. Um, you can shrink it all the way down and get a very clean image, usually around three power, and then be able to zoom in like on a LR24 or something like this to about 15, 16 power. So it does depend on the device and the capability. Yeah, usually stuff. for the thermal stuff, you have like short range stuff like small ones, especially mm -hmm. if we're talking like the EOTech line. So you have like the SR and then the LR and then the ELR. So there you go, it's all in the name. Mm -hmm. Anything else that we missed that you kind of want to touch on? I know this is a very high level right. in general video, but anything that you learned maybe when you started getting into, how long have you been in the night vision thermal space? Oh man, I've been using this stuff for north of six, seven years now. And can you, can you remember anything back from when you first started that would like be like, man, I wish, like that was crazy that I learned that or. Yeah, I wish I would have started shooting passively sooner. Mm -hmm. um, it was really tough to have to transition to that after being pretty decent with the, the Active laser. Active shooting, okay. Yeah, running the LAM is really simple. What's the LAM? Uh, laser aiming module. So mm -hmm. that's like a blanket term for all the okay. Any, F15 things. Okay, got you. And then transitioning to passive shooting, which is like the thing to do, especially mm -hmm. for like the LE side of it, unless you're in a building, that well, sucks. It's really hard to do. And it's really hard to get your equipment set up right to where you can run the white light and still kind of see the laser mm -hmm. inside the site and then yeah. be able to look through the nods and still see it. So I think like setting all that up was kind of a big learning curve to making sure your gear, like specifically the site, is optimal for both passive and like a white light override mm -hmm. and running everything without the LAM. Mm -hmm. That was something that had really just started becoming a thing about three years ago. And for me to make that shift was... Well, it's important because... It, it the, is important, the, the Taliban The Taliban has NAS now, thanks to the, the withdrawal any, that we Any had, security which, camera will pick uh, up a laser. Yeah, we, yeah, exactly. That's a good point too. But it just the, the, the nature of warfare today is if you don't have the ability to aim passively, you're gonna get... You're gonna yeah, show. a good rule of thumb is you're not gonna use the, the laser unless you're inside, if we're talking like kind of a tactical environment. Mm -hmm. Inside being like clearing a building, CQB mm -hmm. stuff. So it's nice to have, but in, in all reality, if you're outdoors, like if you're fighting in Ukraine, for instance, like your your watch or your phone will give away your location. Totally. It's a tiny little IR strobe. Yeah, let cigarette alone, can I, be seen from like a mile yeah, away. Yeah, let alone your, let alone a flood from a, from a lamb or a laser, for instance. So Certainly. I think it's really important for people to understand. Obviously mission dictates your gear. I think for a lot of civilians where we're kind of preparing for more than one scenario, it's important to have a broad spectrum of, of kind of what your capabilities are and what to expect when you're, when you're setting up your helmet or when you're setting up your rifle to, to mm -hmm. aim with night vision or thermal. So dude, I, I appreciate it, man. I think we've covered a lot today. I think we're going to need to come back and definitely let me know down in the comments below what you want to see more of or what you want to see first because I have a feeling we're going to be doing yeah, demoing totally. let's, a let's lot of stuff. Let's get a good idea stuff. for like the first kind of review that we yeah, do. Yeah, let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see first as far as whether it's nods, whether it's lasers, whether whatever it might be, just helmet setup or gun setup. Uh, and then we'll start working on those videos uh, more more yep. recent than, than uh, pushing st other stuff out because there's definitely a market for this type of stuff you guys sell a lot of night vision and thermal right that's all we do um, that, and that's all you do is sell that shit high-end shit so if you guys are interested in any of these products use bro code rdb5 over at downrangethermal.com and pick it up and support the channel at the same time